I thought what I would do today is uh, go through, I was talking with someone about, uh, I don't know, talking with, with some other people in our organization about like people who are working on uh, changing how they do their applications. Essentially like, uh, I guess you could say like, if all this digital transformation stuff seems so obvious, the way you change doing your applications, uh, you know, make it work out much better for you. Uh, target your business, align all that nonsense. Like, why is it so hard to uh, to to get it uh, working for people? What are the what are the barriers that people have? So, I want to go through and uh, collect uh, collect together from the various various uh, sources that I have, kind of what those things are, and not really talk about them in depth, but just catalog them. Maybe I'll mention a few little aside things here. So let's see, we're gonna call this, let me switch over to the uh, to the screen here. And we will call this, why is this so hard? An omnibus. Now omnibus just means, you know, like a collection of everything. So the first thing I'm gonna look at, uh, and I'll put this in, in the chat here is, the these this list of little videos that I made a while ago, which kind of uh, I don't know, it's, it's a it's a bit of my uh, when did I make these? A long time ago. Has one of my favorite ones where I'm making some chicken in the oven. So first, uh, let's go over some some big ones here. So compliance and compliance is basically about needing to uh, hold on this is wigging me out anyways so compliance is uh, a big issue and a lot of it has to do with like moving from uh, you basically just have to like auditors need to re-verify the new tech stack And let's see, reference US Air Force going through many months of re verification, but now it's shipped in weeks, months instead of years. Okay. So this is something that I've talked about uh, a lot. So that's one one barrier people have to transforming the way they're doing software, putting a new platform in place, all of that exciting sort of stuff. Now, let's look at uh, another one. Okay, I'm gonna do these sort of out of order, just as as I find them. So tech debt, uh, using older systems that cannot be adapted to uses. E.g., let's see, most often. ERP and CRM systems, sometimes mainframe stuff, need some API, wrapping, re-platforming, rewriting. Okay. So that's something that uh, people often face there. Let me, okay. Let me check the audio here. Make sure it's working. I'm gonna actually start a different view of this. This so sort of proves the lesson that when you're doing AV stuff, you just like get it set up working and never change it. All I've done is, uh, I think I've put my headphone plug in a different jack, and now things are all jacked up, so to speak. But let's see. Yeah, very weird. Okay, let me close this, that. You, of course, can't see my troubleshooting, but take a look at those videos. Isn't that exciting? 
All right. So for the record, uh, if you need a record, what happened here is for some reason in Safari, it's not playing my audio. Maybe I haven't given uh, uh, permission for Twitch to access the uh, whatever it is. So whatever. Okay, so let me go back on track here. So this is all about what you need to do is essentially work on refactoring things. And as I've been writing about in the legacy trap, a lot of the, the issue here is that uh, the hurdle is connecting all the, let's say, unseen work of modernization to creating new business capabilities not just upkeep. All right, so tech debt is always a problem. And then let's go ahead and we'll put security. Security. Similar to compliance, security, people, and policy needs to understand, trust, and be able to, I don't really know security stuff, but I'm just gonna say risk manage uh, new stack. Done right. There are plenty of new controls that security gets from Kubernetes and a true CI CD pipeline. So, same thing there, right? So let's see, reducing risk, uh-huh. So I happen to have some watermelon here, which is very refreshing. So I'm gonna eat some right now. So let's cover another one, which is big bangs, big bands. So let's see, people often want to transform everything at once due to urgency. Let's see, overconfidence and making a business case. Big bang change doesn't work well. Let's see, you have to learn what works in your org and as let's see and as with your software where you're incrementally every week learning and getting better at it you have to adapt your transformation to your organization okay so that just basically is like you know you can't switch over hundreds of, of people tens of teams and stuff like that all at once you gotta Start small, start small, learn and seed. Let's see, so hurdle, yeah. So let's do it this way, we'll say solution. Huh, all right. Compliance, tech debt, let's see what else. Manager, meeting tool. Let's see. We'll have people don't like, let's call it individuals don't change. Frozen middle. Those will be two separate ones right there. Okay. So thriving during a crisis. Yeah. Let's say bottoms up change rarely works. So enlightened, ambitious teams and individuals want to change how the org works but 
certificates, no support from management or peers. So the solution here is there's no urgency from management. You need to either create or wait for some or slowly skunk works it. Skunk works a series of small successes that are business facing. All right, so big bangs rarely work. Start small and seed. Focus on business facing apps that are easy to succeed at and low risk. So here you have the uh, uh, quadrant of uh, like X is technical feasibility ease, Y axis is business, let's call it value, payoff. So a lot of these, you know, the solutions end up being the same, but they're pretty, these would be some good little tiny videos to make, which I'm always on the lookout for. Okay, big bangs really work, bottoms up. These are not phrased, so what big bangs, we'll also call this like, can't change enough at once. Bottoms up change, let's see. So, okay, that's a good review of, I think, what we've got there. Yeah, okay, so now, let's go over here and look at what I have done in the history of Tanzu Talk. Look at the, the playlist here. There's my thrilling. Goofy is always self. Oh, come on. Let's get rid of this guy. Okay. So what have we been doing here recently? Container strategy notebook. Mm. Mm-hmm. I know one. Build it and no one comes. So, let's see, we'll call them ops, DevOps, teams. Build a platform and tools, but groups don't use them much. So, here is to one make sure you have executive urgency support and product manage the platform with developers go on roadshow and iterate features rather than building the complete platform all at once. Also, use Tanzu, because that's what we do. Already built over seven plus years and always evolving. All right, there you go. Use Tanzu. All right, so. Let's see how this one is doing. This one performed pretty well. Is it gonna be up? Uh oh, just over a thousand. That's a pretty good one. Okay. I put a gratuitous baby picture in there even though she doesn't show up at all. So here's metrics. Transformation requires trying new things. Yep, I had a prep for a talk. Boy, these are, I remember these videos. Best practices for learning. Uh huh. Yep. 
was that one all about? Observability held back by legacy software. Yeah, always the legacy software. Uh huh. Boy, I sure I've made a lot of these. Scaling culture. Yeah, three ways to scale things. I wonder what I went over here. Let's see. Did I put chapter markers in here? Ah, oh, I lazied out. All right, let me close that up. Uh huh. Motivating people to change, changing habits. So I'm not finding anything. So let's see. And I think what's related to this one is new platform operations, right? So that's pretty key there. And then uh, it's funny that someone, when, when they shared this internally, they were like, Kote says you should take your vacation and then promptly went on vacation, which, you know, makes sense. Uh, Compliance is a feature, culture metrics, back when they did all my metric talk, urgency. Uh, uh, hey, there's Paul. All right, so I think I'm almost done with looking through these. Uh-huh. do an update of some of these so let's see uh -huh. so there is something about prioritizing uh, de-risking software uh-huh chargebacks boy that's a, that's a topic that's thrilling Look at how we used to do this stuff. Got some nice little, uh... let's check in on what the, these videos used to look like back in 2020. So over a year ago, wow, it's only been a year. It's very confusing. Huh? Let's see. You won't be able to hear this, but you can see it moving around. Wow, look at that. I put the Twitter handles up there. Pretty excellent. Okay, so then the next thing I want to look at is uh, this is a pretty good compliance, security, tech debt. You know, I think see there's a whole other like realm of, of tech. Let me categorize these while I'm here. So tech this is mm, it is tech, I guess. And this is meatware. Yep, good old meatware. This is kind of like, I'm gonna call this EA work. I don't really know if it's what an EA should do, but let's just put it in there. And then that would be, this is like my evolving idea of uh, what an enterprise architect should do, namely kind of figure out building this whole platform and building the capabilities that uh, the developers need. Not complete. So let's see. Often, let's see. Don't actually have CD. They just automate bills. And then the other problem is when you change to 
Kubernetes, you have a new way of building and deploying uh, your apps and services. Configuring and deploying your services, developers will spend a lot of time on that building their own stuff unique for a team and then you're back in into wasting productivity so a solution you need to product manage that pipeline we'll say product manage and mandate that pipeline with good tools that are constantly updated to be better than what devs themselves could do. And here we have the Tanzu build service and associated things like build packs, and let's see, e.g. build packs and Tanzu build service, right? So there's a whole like way of thinking about, you know, you can put in place a way of doing all of this instead of relying on people building and doing it all on their own. And then also, this also, uh, 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 you're wasting on productivity. This variability also causes lots of compliance and security waste because you have to verify all the different things. All right, so then let's look at the books. Let me open these up. Where do I have the books? So first we'll look at old monolithic transformation. Now, if you want to get a copy of these books as I'm going over them, I'll put a link here. You can go to kote.io slash books. You can see where you can download each of these books that I'm, I'm going to look over. And again, what I'm going to do is just skim through them to kind of pick up the details. You know, a lot of this writing down is good for uh, what people will call an outboard brain. Right, like I, it's hard for me to organize and remember this stuff. So going through it, it's like super polished notes. <laughs> I can go through it and organize my thoughts. You know, when I first did, when uh, we were going over this book, how come it? I wish preview had just like a laser pointer thing. I think someone told me that they do have one, but anyways, there was there was like a little dude standing up here going on like, ah, and I don't know, that seemed weird to have that. So I asked them to take the uh, little guy off and I think it worked out well. It's a nice like monolith. I like these covers a lot more than the, uh, the other ones they have, but you know, these are kind of like commission books. And I always think maybe the editorial people at O'Reilly were like, Ooh, these look like too much like our regular books. We should back off on, uh, on doing that and kind of make them stand out as different. I don't know. I mean, I think I think part of the brand of like a publisher like this is if you you stick to the same, you don't want to change the stuff around too much. Kind of like Penguin Books, like they change over the years, but they always have a very distinctive uh, look to them. So let's see what hurdles that we come over here. Right, this is a pretty good table of contents, but let's just scroll through it. Right, so we got all of this, so we don't need to worry so much about that small batch thinking. So. The people I'm talking to, to are, have already kind of understand what this is. So I'm not going to go over that with them. This is like, if you remember, I'm sure you've read Monolithic Transformation in detail. But if you remember, this kind of establishes uh, what, what the various, what the approach is to be product oriented. So that's, let's see, let me put this down here is like, if organization does not actually change, why doesn't it change? Likely 
lack of executive support. All right. Developers. Huh. So, okay. Let's put, so this is like meatware. Skills. Every survey, let's see. Everyone always worries that their people don't have the right skills. Every survey ever always shows this. Now, you know, solution. Training is good, but isn't enough. You need to pair up with experienced people and seed those people across new teams to do on the job. Training. I don't know, there's a lot to be said for that. Like. But I think that's basically, you know, you can start with Hanzu Labs people and then fade them out as needed. EG, I think at Volkswagen and many other places they, they've done this. And then, yep. Also, this is much like tech debt. It means leadership has neglected building, let's see, has neglected maintaining, and let's see, their machine and making sure it's ready for business flexibility, agility. Their KPI has not been met. All right, so then that's a good one to look at. Let's come down here. So let's keep scrolling. So this is... Mm -hmm. Wow, did I actually cover all this? That's a lot of stuff. Hmm. Ah. Let me find... Let's, do I still have Safari open here? Let's find, I tweeted this. I'm gonna use this as some major blockers. Man, who knows what's going on in Twitter. I wrote this down here. Here we go. This is a great So we have, let's see, meatware. Uninspired people. That's not quite what it is. And then another meatware problem is, uh, yeah, let's call it transformation without a belief. Uninspired, uninspired, and then let's say, Powered, but confused. I suppose. Here, let's do it this way. I, I like these, these phrases. So, transformation without belief is process waste. So, uninspired people won't put in the needed effort to do a good job. Worse, maybe a fifth. May sabotage. Things mostly due to, let's call it, transformation fatigue and distrust. Let's say, learned distrust of management. So, Let's see, 
management, transparency through metrics and sharing failures, build up success cases, seeding, let's see, what would we call them? The successful people to new teams and internal marketing offices. Learned, yeah, there we go. Learn distress. Empowering, empowered but confusion. So we'll use the phrase here. Empowerment without clarity is chaos. So there's the other thing I'm going to go over collecting this stuff together is I have that, that final slide I use and I'll look at my presentations basically empowered, but confused about what to do week to week day to day. So solution make a crisp actionable strategy. Let's, let's say vision strategy we'll call this you know the dbs thing of dbs live more bank less and then also focus on instead of strategy focus on principles and then let's say uh, let's say the Tanzu labs practices like the radical stuff and then um, the UK GDS principles I'll make a strategy is for now well, whatever strategy is a whole other meat and potatoes i i don't i don't know what that means uh so let's open this up and then come over here and then i'm going to link this up I think that, oh what's going on here in Twitter uh-huh oh that's exciting lots of hot action in the Twitter okay now let's get rid of that actually let's bring it back and then let me just go here okay so live more bank less yep let me go ahead and get this reference in here it's always such a great pithy way of putting it or I don't know if pithy is the right word it's a it's effective all right so let's keep looking for what uh, barriers are uh-huh look at that I even give some advice huh it's like I put a lot of thought into some of this stuff that's kind of crazy Huh, little Oregon Trail joke there. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's also, also, Management has to spend a lot of time walking the halls to see if people understand the strategy and can translate it into actions. And then here, good old friend Sophie and Daimler Mercedes. All right. Gathering feedback. 
Yeah, a manifesto is pretty good. Let me see. Uh huh. Manifestos are helpful to kind of are helpful sometimes. Put that in there. Values of culture, blah blah blah. Stuff hasn't really changed very much over the years, which kind of is part of the point of uh, there being hurdles to transformation. If we've known all this stuff forever, how come it's taken so long for people to change over? I guess you can also say maybe that means it's all junk. That'll work too. I mean, not a work. It's a it's a potentially cogent argument. Who knows if it's uh, true or not? Ah, yes, the business case. Why do we have a lone bullet point here? That's kind of strange. Hold on a moment. I got to check something here. Let me turn this off in case there's anything embarrassing. Just some exciting news about some plates that we have. Uh huh. Which one is this? You gonna? Yeah. So the business case. So yeah, we need to get to finance eventually. Do I have that here? That's a hard one. Platform operations, EA work, small series of projects. Uh huh. But is that the Eisenhower matrix? Sort of. Uh, okay, so let's see. Reluctant. Individuals. Okay, so more meatware. Do I already have this up here? See, I build it, big bang. Okay. Let's see. Demonstrate that people, people's lives get better with the new methods. Ship more frequently, less overtime. Less toil, dumb work. So, people are skeptical of changing. Don't see that it matters. And or think they're too old and crusty. So, solution demonstrate. Also seed some old and crusty people on initial teams to convert them to advocates for change. Advocates and living proof for change. Mm -hmm. Beyond newsletters. Yeah, so I think what we have here, there are some, would you call them tent pole? Let's, let's use the pillars thing. Pillars of change. So lots of internal advocacy, roadshows, marketing. Start small, seed people. Let's call it pairing and seeding. 
So what this means is like common is wide affecting wide affecting solutions to scale digital transformation. All right. We'll make this is it ah that's not what we wanted was it let's bring this back bring this guy back i always forget how do you do the uh the header font i think i'm gonna stop using apple notes except for like sharing family stuff because it's just i don't know it's just not quite as good as like using bear or pretty much anything else. <laughs> it's great for like sharing uh, with with my wife and, and you know, the writing with the pencil stuff's okay in it, but. So let me go through the other thing here. So let me go back to, so these are ones I haven't done yet. And what are some common things? So compliance, ah. So there's another pillar of change that when you have CI, CD, and Kubernetes in place. Let's see. You get more controls for compliance and security, but need to review all of that with your auditors, security people, right? They won't just believe it. Start small, pick a series of small business facing apps to transform and build, let's see, transform, let's see. Adapt general advice to your org and build up a string of successes to prove new methods. Start with experienced individuals and pair program, etc. Let's see to train up new people. Take the let's see teacherly, I'm going to use the word teacherly, people and move them to new teams to repeat and spread. Uh-huh. Dedicate at least one person to be the internal advocate. Reorient, let's call it internal comms. To be like to be like tech company marketing this will be a lot more work than you think i.e more than just monthly newsletters have quarterly conferences etc all right so we got that start small huh all right so there's some more Let's see if there's bottoms up change. Yeah, so that's, and then tech debt is like its own problem. There's another one here. I don't know how to phrase it, but it's like lack of belief and motivation in staff. Yeah, and then another thing is lack of urgency from management and executives. They don't actually change what they do, nor give people new tools, powers to do things in a new way. Let me see where we get reluctant individuals, skills, build it, no one comes, bottom of change really works. Let me add this one up here. Let 
Let's call it all talk, no tools. <laughs> this is another meware problem. I think I talked about this up here. Let's see, urgency already. Huh? Items up change really works well. Yeah. Let me switch. There's no urgency in your turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, really, let's put this here. Solution is that. Now, so then let's go. Oh, I think my music is repeating itself so let's shift to a different one i'm going to turn that one off do i still have the dad jazz oh yeah okay we'll turn that one off well okay that didn't work the way i wanted to let me mute that one go all right so let's see there's no urgency for management to create urgency or wait for some or some yep also focus a lot on how you solve business problems not tech problems, or even get new capabilities. Okay, I'll talk no tools, huh? All right. That's, re that's really like. Sharing and seeding. Yep, okay. Let's keep moving through here. Six common cloud metrics. Metrics is a little too like. put this uh, CF my metrics talk for business metrics etc let me find that where are we here so I've covered that a tremendous amount over here in Tanzu talk land but let me find where the actual platform as a product. Yeah, here we go. So let me get this one. Put that in there. And then while I'm doing this, let's get the old platform as a product talk here. Let's make sure you don't get any. Platform as a product. So we got that. All right. Compile as a clarity. Transformation with that belief. Also, like, let's say address common fears and explore what 
motivations. Whoa, what's going on there? What motivations work for your staff? Let's see. There we go. A little self promotion. All right. Let's keep going through the book here. How long we got on this? Long time. Well, it is an omnibus, so we're trying to collect everything. Uh -huh. There's compliance. Improving it. I have some salmon left over. I think I'll have that for lunch. You're going to need a platform. Oh, look at those vertical things there. That's fun. Ah, uh, yes. Here's like, this is the good manifesto here. Okay, so we're done with that one. Now, let's open up the next book. What did I write next? The business bottleneck. There we go. If you've been watching this whole time, see there's those new covers. I don't know, I don't really like those, but whatever. Not my problem. Mm-hmm. So, let's... Ah, uh, what's going on? There we go. Okay. So, I would argue that finance is a problem. So, you want to focus on weekly iterative product finance wants to fund annual projects so finance and and in reality if you think about the whole corporate planning thing right like you start corporate planning i don't know four or five months before the actual due date right so if you're planning your corporate planning for let's say 20 calendar year 2022 you're probably going to start thinking about it in so you're going to start it on January 2nd. Let's let people get over the New Year's hangovers. You're going to start on January 3rd. Uh, and so you've been working probably for like, you know, six months or so to like figure out what the new templates are you have to use for your corporate finance. Uh, go through all the process of like, you know, syncing up with people and making sure that you've got your politics straight, putting together what your own plans are. And then, you know, going through with finance, all the iterations of getting the budget and the permission uh, that you need. And you're, you're basically out, you know, you've given yourself like two, before you've shipped one line of code, you planned everything out. Let's call it corporate finance and strategy. So you have to, uh, Let's say, uh, you have to spend 12 to 18 months planning, planning, politicking, revising without ever shipping one line of code to get validation learning. Solution, yes, this is a problem. <laughs> uh, so let's see start talking start small to be out of this big picture thing market your success let's see enlist finance and strategy people in small projects to experience how a smaller approach changes how oh, risk management stuff. Also, you can just get big blocks of funding. This is really a problem. Because often the finance people rule unchangeable uh, rules. So 
they need to be motivated to change. You know, all policy and compliance is just based on people's decisions about things. Obviously, about laws they have to comply with, but they have to, uh, you have to get some imagination to see how you get it implemented in a way that is uh, helpful for everyone, including what the policy is. I don't know what to tell you. So with strategy, so strategy should be interested in the validated learning to come up with their own work. But again, they need to be so. So you can demonstrate. And then the main point here is like, nothing is better than success making money and having people latch on to that. All right. Uh -huh. Being failure. Let's see what I say here. Yeah, okay, so let's go over. Uh, see, organizational change is a difficult one, right? Because let's put it this way, meatware can't change the organization structure. Let's see. Becoming product-centric requires creating product teams. Changing, let's see. The changing org structure is often Let's see. For individuals, their roles change. For HR, well, they just can't wrap their heads around it. Well, that's not, that's unfair. For HR, it's a big change, and may also not be. May also the ongoing change until you figure it out. So, solution. Let's see, where is, did I say solution? Did I find it? So, solution. Need to get executive urgency to push through change. That's their job, after all. being the architect of the factory of the product that is okay it's their pro of their product the org let's see or create a new org or virtual. Let's say the second may seem bad, but it's likely better than doing nothing. Because, you know, if it's not better than doing nothing, why change in the first place? If you like things or the way things are going, how they are. Then, uh, ergo, don't bother with any of this. Is ergo the right word? I don't really know. Okay. So, let's keep going here. The best way to phrase, uh-huh, training center. This is from the good old DevOps report. Yep, we already have covered seeding stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Now let's add the tech debt up here. Longer term by putting in place platform operations say centralized platform you should prevent a lot of the variation that causes tech debt and ins institutional Getting also by using Kubernetes Distro, you don't get stuck on years old versions as we saw in DIY OpenStack and DIY Kubernetes and we see in early DIY Kubernetes stacks. Same for uh, dev frameworks and services, e.g. Spring, etc. All right. Let's see. All right. That's some pretty, uh-huh. There's metrics to use. All right, let's close this out and look at the, uh, now we're gonna look at the, the mindset book and then at some of my presentations and then I'm gonna have lunch. I oh, don't worry, I won't eat lunch here. All right. This is one of the worst table of contents that I think I've put together. Look, it's got two things that are, it's kind of hilarious. This is what you don't want to see in a table of contents. I should have done a better job here. It's kind of ridiculous, whatever. So a mindset, yeah. Software as a product. This is kind of applies here exactly. Because a lot of this is about individual management way of thinking. And it kind of is just another approach to, uh, you know, as I go over like the previous books. Look, this is one of my, maybe my weirdness achievement of the year. I made a, a, a Lovecraft reference to the, the insane pipe you know piping god very exciting more on metrics uh-huh all right here we go let me see where i have this okay there's that reference so let me get this closed out and then I think I put this, uh, okay. Yep, okay. So we got that, filter talent and retain employees. Yeah, there's not really much in here. These are, you know, a lot of these were the little videos that I did, which is fun. Okay, now, the next thing I wanna do I think the last thing is I am going to open up the common problems thing that I, you know, at the end of the executive roundtable things that I do, I often end in, 
common problems. Like a slide that shows common problems people go through. Ooh, PowerPoint's uh, chugging along there. Uh, and I think what that will be good for, it's another round. Of, this is, a, I, I should go over. Oh, I did go over this, I think. Have I? Oh, I don't think I've done a good run through of this. I didn't actually publish these in the uh, the YouTube list. But this is the new executive uh, roundtable presentation I have. We call it the toolkit presentation. So far, it's gone well. So it lists a lot of toolkit stuff. But what we want is this. So this is, let me take a screenshot of this. This is the normal roundup of common problems that people have. And let me see. Let's see, I think I covered all of these. Well, let's see what we have here. Skills and hiring, elections to change, scaling, new roles. I should change that one because that's, I, yeah. Budgeting, scaling, new roles. Yeah. IT is still in the basement, compliance. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's good. And let me see, this is a bit of the solutions, right? Yep, user interviews. Okay, good. All right, so what I'll do, I think I'll publish this in my uh, my newsletter. This part here, I think I'll, this is, be, this is great. I should do little videos of this. Good job, me. Uh, but I'll put this in, I think I'll finish out the pillar stuff a little bit. And if you want to subscribe to my newsletter so you can get a copy of it, if you go to kote.io slash newsletter, huh? you can uh, click on subscribe there. It's also just on my uh, my Twitter profile. So if you go to, uh, here, I'll put a link to this because I'll dump this into here. And then you can, um, here we go. If you want to get the list, let's see the finished list I just made. Subscribe to my newsletter and I'll put it in this week's edition. There we go. Yeah, if you remember, so I kind of, I went over some of this, but I, uh, I started typing up something new for the legacy trap and I put that in the newsletter most recently. If you want to read that, oh, look at that font. Good stuff. All right. So, you know, as always, if you want to get the archive, I'll go ahead and upload this one. But if you want to get the archive for this, you can go to tonsutalk.com and you can see we've got videos up there. You can see the uh, the playlist that we have. You can get all those links to those books, all sorts of other things uh, that we have going on. You know, there's you've already probably you might have already seen, but we've got tons of videos there. And uh, I think I think with that, I'll close off for the day and uh, go have some of that salmon.